And welcome back, guys, to Fawn's commentary of Resident Evil Deadly Silence. Classic chill. So, from here on out, all the objectives are pretty basic. We gotta find an item, use it on something. The usual. Along the way, we get to kill some zombies. Uh, the knife in this game, in this board at least, is a lot more usable than the, in the original version. Because in the original version, it, w it was a weapon that took up a slot in your inventory. And it also had a fairly small range. So it was almost completely useless. Still usable, but not very tactful very much. But in this one, this uh, the tactical knife feature from Resident Evil 4 was implemented where all you gotta do is press L1 and it summons the knife, which actually has a much more larger attack range than before, and it doesn't take up an inventory slot. How very convenient. Hmm. A tiny book about medicinal herbs. As you may know, there are many plants that have medicinal qualities. Since ancient times, humans have been healing wounds and disease using various plants. In this book, we're going to explore three such herbs that grow around the Arclay Mountains and provide information on those plants with medical properties. Each herb has a different color and a different effect as a medical plant. The green one recovers physical strength, the blue one neutralizes natural toxins, while the red one does not have any effect by itself. The red herb is only effective when it is mixed with other herbs. For example, if you mix the herb with the herb that recovers physical strength, the effect is tripled. By adjusting the amount and experimenting with these three herbs, you can create various kinds of medicines, but I'll leave the details in your hand because that, that's the best way to acquire true knowledge. Patani book has been filed. And more zombies to kill. Yeah, killing these guys in slow motion was such a pain in the ass. Because my whole reaction time was just thrown off. But eventually I, got, I killed them. Luckily, when zombies are next to stairs, for some reason they never choose to bite you, they just puke at you. That was basically their alternative means of attacking you should they be on the stairs, which they never are. They can't be on the stairs in this game. I don't think that feature was implemented until Resident Evil 3. But for the most part, if you know how to use the knife well, then you really don't need to use a gun against zombies. Unless you feel like overkilling them. Please stay asleep. Please. Alright. First save room should be down here. Yeah, I wasn't as lucky with this zombie, unfortunately. Damn zombie. The convenient thing about Resident Evil DS is that <clears throat> in the original version of this game, it was usually kind of hard to tell whether you were in danger or not because the character animation never changed. So without really knowing it, you'd be dead before you'd realize you were in any real danger. In this one, you can tell that your health has gotten lower by looking at the flashing light on the top screen of the DS. Right now it's yellow, which means I'm in caution. Not too much to worry about right now. But it really is a cause for concern if you're like in orange caution or de definitely in red danger. But... Yeah, nothing too much to worry about here. And now that we've, ha we've done our business here, we can move on. So yeah, again with this, I, I have played the game a lot, so I know how to do everything. It's just that my memory kind of lapsed a bit a few times. So yeah, don't get too on my case if I screw up a few times. And that's probably the last I'll talk about that. Because you guys are, should already know by now that I screwed up. And... For the most part... There's a good reason why I took a different approach at the beginning. Uh, like, not doing the Jill Sandwich scene and all that. Doing that path, not, it makes it a little easier because you get the shotgun without having to get the broken shotgun. And you get some acid rounds in the main hall. Like, 
on our first trip back to the main hall, I've already would have gotten the acid rounds by now, but taking the other route, you get the grenade launcher by Barry, which you could have just gotten yourself, but yeah. In the classic mode, or the original mode in the uh, Resident Evil director's cut, you don't. Forest never comes back as a zombie, but in rebirth mode in this game and in arranged mode in Resident Evil director's cut, he does. Which makes getting the grenade launcher a little harder, but not that much harder. And it's super easy to get past these guys since you're since they're next to stairs. There's really no point in killing them. If our main objective in this episode is just to go kill a big mutated plant. Oh my god, these guys just never stay dead, do they? I don't know how he got so close that fast, but... Uh, whatever. You'd think it'd be easier to shake him off, considering he's missing an arm, but... Uh, it doesn't matter, he's dead now. Now let's go kill that plant. I'm sure an environmentalist will be on my case about this. Yeah, I expect to see that quite a bit. Me exiting out of my uh, inventory quite a bit. I kept getting the run and select buttons confused, so... Since the run button also counts as the cancel button... Yeah, that kind of really pissed me off when it happened. And it's withering, and it's dead. Hooray! Now I can go get what's on the other side. And yeah, speaking of health items, I tried, I only grabbed what I really needed. I didn't really need to grab, I'm not, I'm not like other players who like grab every single health item there is. In Resident Evil 1, there's not really much of a need to grab every single health item that comes your way. Now Resident Evil 3, that's a whole different story. That much I can tell you for sure. You're gonna need every her herb you can find, and there's just never enough herbs in that game. In this one, there's more than enough. So, not too much to worry. I mean, if you know how the game works, it shouldn't really be that hard. What I don't understand, though, is that every zombie in this game is a man. Which makes no sense, but whatever. And this is the only bedroom in the entire mansion, ladies and gentlemen. No room for a guest, I guess. Hmm, what could this be? Oh my god, something in the closet! Sneaky bastard. Doing the old cliche monster in the closet. Who would have guessed? And when you think about it, there's not really that many closets in this mansion. That's like the only closet you find in this entire place. Sure don't. He sure is clumsy, though. He keeps falling down after me. No, he's dead now, anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter. Let's read his diary after I take these shotgun shells he hid conspicuously in his closet. Now, let's read that diary. Keeper's Diary. At night, I played poker with Scott the Guard, Alias, and Steve the Researcher. Steve was really lucky, but I think he was cheating. What a scumbag. Today, a high-ranking researcher asked me to take care of a new kind of monster. They look like gorillas without any skin. They told me to feed them live food. When I threw in a pig, they were playing with it, tearing off the pig's legs and pulling off the guts before actually eating it. Around 5 o'clock this morning, Scott came in and woke me up suddenly. He was wearing a protection suit that looked like a space suit. He told me he would put one on as well. I heard there was an accident in the basement lab. It's no wonder. These researchers never rest it, even at night. he have been wearing this annoying space suit since yesterday. I feel all musty and my skin is very itchy. By way of revenge, I didn't feed those dogs. I went to the medical room because my back is all swollen and itchy. They put a big bandage on my back, and the doctor told me I did not need to wear the spacesuit anymore. I guess I can sleep well tonight. When I woke up this morning, I found another blister on my foot. It was annoying, and I ended up dragging my foot as I went to the dog's pen. They have been quiet since morning, which was very unusual. I found that some of them had escaped. I'll be in real trouble if the higher-ups find out. Even though I didn't feel well, I decided to go see Nancy. It's my first day off in a long time, but I was stopped by the guard on the way out. 
They say the company has ordered that no one leaves the grounds. I can't even make a phone call. What kind of sick joke is this? I heard there was a researcher who tried to escape from the mansion. Who was shot last night. My entire body feels burning hot and itchy at night. When I was scratching my swelling on the arm, a lump of front and flesh dropped off. What the fuck is happening to me? Every fever gone, but itchy. Hungry and eat doggy food. Itchy, itchy Scott came. Ugly face, so killed him. Tasty. Four, itchy, tasty. Keeper's diary has been filed. Oh, the keeper must have been a very irritable fellow. Now then, back to exploring the mansion. This must be the piano room. Yes, the first survival horror game indeed had a piano. And I bet in almost every other survival horror game that came after, there's at least one piano in a horror game. At least one. A fine grand piano. It's the Moonlight Sonata. This is hardly the time or the place, Jill. We should be investigating, not playing music. Well, I guess this is a good stress reliever. <sighs> Whoa! That's awesome! It opened the wall! Oh, wait, shit. I forgot to get the emblem from the dining hall. I guess I have to backtrack now, huh? I try to limit my trips to the save room, because who really wants to watch me backtracking back to a save room every, like, too many times just to drop off one item and then come back to get the item again? So yeah, to make this entertaining I have to uh, minimize my trips. For your sake, of course. Well, let's go listen to some nice tunes from the save room. Oh, that's nice. Well, anyhow, guys, this has been episode two. I'll be seeing you soon in episode three. See you then.